I'm Adam. I'm Richard. And we're from Cloudbeds, and we're here today on Tech Talk Travel. So hi and welcome back. Today we have a wonderful pair of guests from Cloudbeds, Adam and Richard, who are the founders. Gentlemen, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having Thank us. Um, let's get started, guys, by perhaps talking a little bit about your, your backgrounds without going into too much of a detail, but maybe let's start with what you were doing before you started Cloudbeds and what was your inspiration to, to start the company and, and where did that motivation come from? Well, we were working together before Cloudbeds um, and uh, we, Adam started a boutique consulting firm here in San Diego and uh, he basically hired me to you know, run operations and engineering and programming for, for his company. Yeah. And we worked together for several years growing it. And I think we got well immersed into hospitality through just a variety of different clients. So everything from big brands to small boutiques. And along the way, you know, a travel experience that Rich can get into, but then a customer of ours, it was solving for some of the solution requirements that they needed ultimately became Cloudbeds, you know, seven years later. Right, right. So Cloudbeds has been around now for seven years? Uh, six, 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 six and a little Six and a half, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. In about four years commercial. So two of those years were us founders trying to figure out what we wanted to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What was it that was kind of the, the, the core product to start with and, and when did you start yeah. realizing it's probably a good idea to have other supporting components around we, that? So we started as an an IB internet booking engine, right? And this came out of a travel experience about two years before the World Cup in 2012. I was traveling uh, in Buzios with my girlfriend, my current wife, <laughs> Brazilian, and we were trying to book a posada, so mm. like a little B&B &B mm. in Brazil. And we would Google and, and find results, and it was really difficult to find anyone that had a booking engine online that we could book at. And Booking.com and Decolar were just starting to invest more in the market at the time, right? And there wasn't a lot of availability. And we finally uh, found a Posada that we liked. We called the, the Posada and the guy said, you know, we have availability. And he said, but you have to go to this bank account and deposit money to reserve your room. And we couldn't believe this, right? This is two years before the World Cup. Like there's all this inventory that has to go online to sell. And I called Adam and, and I was like, oh my gosh, right? Like, there's no way to just book a little posada or a little hotel here. Let's do, let's build what we said at the time was let's build open table for travel. Right. Yeah. And it started with the IB. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And I think along the way, some big events in the industry sort of triggered, okay, the booking engine makes sense, but we need a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, IHG partnered with Amadeus, trying to build the sort of hybrid CRS PMS platform. Sabre went to Wyndham and said, hey, we'll take Synexus and make it a PMS and much more. And, and that sort of triggered, okay, if the big guys are thinking about eliminating all the stacking of technology into one single experience, mm -hmm. why can't we do that from the bottom up? Right. And uh, I think the critical moment was when our chairman of our board introduced us to our now VP of sales. And when Rafa joined the company, he sort of injected a lot of hospitality experience in day to day, all his frustrations of running big brands, small brands. And he's like, if we just keep growing mm. slowly over time, we'll, we'll be something special to this industry. Mm. And fast forward, it's been I'll, ne I'll never ride. forget. We, uh, we sat down with Rafa, and Rafa came from Travel Click, right, back in the day. And uh, we sat down with Rafa and our product team, and, and Rafa was saying, look, we just, need this, we just need this simple dashboard that gives a two-week view. I mean, this is way when we were super simple. We just need this little <laughs> dashboard for a property owner to see what's going on, like who's coming in, what does occupancy look like over a two-week period of time. And, it, and the IBE, the, the booking engine we created, evolved kind of into a little dashboard. And it was really simple. And then the dashboard involved into a reservation view, and then the reservation view, and then reports, and then you know room assignments, and all of this, the calendar, right? The tape chart came, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it all kind of evolved from the IBE to the dashboard, but we, we tried to keep everything really simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And I think we stopped calling it a PMS. And I think we started calling it an HMS or a hotel right. management suite. That was suite. actually what I was kind of going to lead into that question because PMS is really not the right label to no. put on your brand we didn't even or, know what, or like, product. Back in the day, we didn't even know what to call it. Like yes. it was a kind of a, a channel manager slash CRS slash IB. Like it was a new thing that was evolving, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think we're still evolving, right? Of course. There, yeah. there is some, you know, brands out there that have this affinity for HMS and then some call them PMS. It, it's really mm. all across the board. Mm. And I think we're still trying to figure out as we continue to expand our product roadmaps and, and how we approach the market, we can't just be pigeonholed into one or, or many. Mm. Um, we're, we're trying to redefine the category a little bit. Yeah. but. The, the nice part of it is if you think about what we're solving for, you know, the average property uses 14, 15 different interfaces to power their brand. So mm. everything from accounting to human, you know, re resources all the way to CRS, PMS, et cetera. That's a lot of different systems to be going in and out of. And if we can solve for as many and then partner with this incredible, you know, technology niche that exists inside the hotel industry and partner with all these wonderful tools, it becomes very powerful yeah, and yeah. and so i think our our focus is to keep making the system more open and mm. and able to do more things yeah. while controlling some of the feel mm. uh, of and the interaction that our our, our properties mm. are using so when we talk about products or functionality so the way our, our website lists what cloud is capable of is in a product format but it's really feature format when you buy cloud beds, you're buying everything from a PMS all the way down to reporting and analytics suite. So you get your PMS, you get your channel manager, your central reservation, booking engine. We used OTA in a box as a way to describe how we can daisy chain multiple properties, whether they're part of the same ownership or they mm -hmm. want to be an association of properties together in pool rate and availability. And what that enables us to do is to give them a little fee that they can then go and create their group booking function, um, share reservation details, or whatever you could think of. And so it essentially builds the same, you know, fun, you know, feature set that an OTA would would have capable. You could have mm. a bunch of different, you know, hotels sending their rate and availability into an environment that we okay. can consume. Okay. Yeah. I mean, on the we we also connected that to our channel manager, right? So uh, my allocator extends OT in a box or extends into OT in a box. So like if you have a, a channel that you want to build or like an extranet or something, right, you can connect that to my allocator. So anyone can build to my allocator. It's completely open. Uh, we can also use my allocator to create like a private channel or private extranet for a group, like a, a, a small group of properties or a large group of properties, right? And it's using the my allocator infrastructure right. for that. Okay. We have an app store marketplace, you know, launching. We have payment facilitation launching. Like all these things that are about simplifying workflows that our properties are dealing with all the mm. time. You don't go and say, I want a la carte. I only want these three systems. You're buying one system and you can turn on and turn off that functionality. It's yep. the same username, password, same user experience. And we did that and designed it that way because we realized, A, it's a lot easier to grab information and consolidate that and make decisions on that information. But also the switching time between all the various applications was like five minutes here, three minutes there. And that added up to thousands of hours mm. um, a mm. year mm. where a staff member is just switching tabs inside browsers or on desktop software. Yeah. And we felt like that was the easiest thing for us to cut out and say, okay, look up from your keyboards and interact with the guests that are coming in and out of your property. Yeah. It all it all comes back to the guest experience, yeah. right? So it's it's like if you think about why we started CloudBets or why we're even doing this, it was because of a travel experience. Being the guest, um, we wanted to make a better travel experience for us, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, like that little experience in Brazil, but it wasn't just that. It was Adam's experiences traveling, and, and like almost everyone in our company, right, has traveled to to you know like many different countries and, and, and kind of loves travel. We kind of embody it. Right? We, have a, and we have a travel Slack channel where people just post photos of where they are in the world. We hit seven right. continents last year. I mean, wow. every continent was hit by our team, wow, which fantastic. was pretty cool. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Yeah. We so lose in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, you, you brought together all the single applications, like all the big companies had before, into one platform. Yep. Um, 
and I, and they can pick and choose from that. How does that work now? You mentioned the marketplace or app store, yeah. whatever you want to call it, most likely exactly the same. How does that work for your for your hotels using your platform? Do they just activate it and then the interface so goes live? It's or? not released yet. Ah, but okay. It's it's uh, it's going to be coming out before ITB. Um, and so it, is that your big ITB announcement? <laughs> like we just like we just. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, one of, it's, it's, it's one of many things. I mean, it should be expected. We have over 51 integration partners and then mm. over 300 integrations that we've completed. It's right. not like we haven't yeah. been known to have integration. Mm. Of course. Yeah. We're just simplifying it down mm. and organizing it. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it is plug and play, right? It's, if yeah. there's something that you need that CloudBits doesn't offer, right? Like a housekeeping module or something that, that is specific to your needs, we want to offer that, right? We're, um, we do have a housekeeping module, right? But it's not going to serve everyone's needs. Um, same thing for group housing. Like we have a group housing module, right? But if, if there's something more that you need, you can use the marketplace or app store. So I think uh, there's so many other companies out there and entrepreneurs that are creating like really unique experiences for, for the hotels, right? For hostels, for B&Bs, right? That, are going to do something different from what we're doing. We want to, we want to enable them to connect to our marketplace. Mm -hmm. so. The marketplace concept is really starting to take off now, isn't it, in our mm -hmm. area? It's something that uh, almost everybody in that scope is doing, and it clearly makes sense. Um, uh, in terms of the, the integrations that you do, are you looking to expand even further once the, once the marketplace has been developed and is uh, online? Are you looking at, at creating further products within, within your own developments cycle Absolutely. or will you focus purely now on having your third party integrations both yeah you know, yeah we look at salesforce atlassian as two mm. applications we use internally and both of them have incredible api ecosystems these marketplaces yeah 80 percent of the technology is inside salesforce inside jira or confluence and then the other 20 percent that we need we go and find that niche solution provider and it enhances it. Yeah. And we see that CloudBed should be 80% of the story. And then the other 20% can be injected and enhanced mm. through all these wonderful tech providers. Can you give an example of that 20% from sure. history? Yeah, so we have Pi, Price Intelligence. It's an incredible little platform um, designed for small independence. It's not an RMS platform um, in its current form. Mm. And there are great solutions out there, Lodge IQ, Pace, uh, you know, things like that, and, and, and many others. Mm. We're never going to limit our ecosystem to protect a product of ours. We want to encourage developers to mm. create not only competition within our own engineering and product teams, but yeah. also we need to provide the best solutions for our customers. We talk mm. about cannibalizing our own product. Yeah. Um, we absolutely embrace that. So we want, we want uh, integration partners to compete with, to compete with what we offer, the module modules yeah. that we offer, right? Mm -hmm. We want a, a Pi competitor in there, right? Because it's uh, there may be somebody that does it better, mm -hmm. that, that has a better solution, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to limit the hotels. So everything we do is to is to try to offer the best experience for our customers mm -hmm. and ultimately the travelers. So it all comes back to the guest, right? And we would never want to limit that. Mm -hmm. But that means we get to keep going, though. There's a yeah, lot of things we can keep building. Right? Like and accounting, finance, you know, extensions to Pi, right? Totally. Um, and, and that might even be part of the marketplace, where they might look at our products, and then we enable them to expand our products through outside services and, and whatnot. We have one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, APIs on the market. Mm -hmm. And a lot of infrastructure and technology has come over from the teams that are doing these real-time connections into all the largest OTAs and using that experience of, of queuing and caching and all that mm -hmm. stuff and applying it to a real-time API that can be digestible by anyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. here's a great, great example. We have a, a decent booking engine. It performs really well for most customers. Well, one of our customers came off Micros. They were a long-term, you know, Fidelio user. They had built their entirely own ecosystem in mobile app form as well as online booking engine. And they're like, well, we don't want to consume your booking engine. We want to take your API and invest in our ecosystem. And a week later, they had consumed the entire API. The booking engine's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that was just one little example where at some point, they could even commercialize their booking engine in our marketplace yeah. if they wanted to. Yeah. And that was all done within a week as well. well. Within a week. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. So let that perhaps leads to the next question. You mentioned it before, this hotel management system concept. What's your opinion of the future PMS? Is it Should it even be called a PMS? Should it be called a hotel operating I, system or management I, system? I, I, I think we want to get away from the name PMS yeah. in general. I think... Uh, you know, we stick to the to the traditional acronyms because people looking for a product are trying to check a box, right? So, we're trying to to hit those boxes. But mm. at the end of the day, it's not it's not the same as the dozen dozens of PMSs that have existed, the legacy sort of thick client mm. systems out there, right? Mm. I think it comes back to analytics and data, mm. um, and how the data can be used to drive better decision making at the front desk at the hotel, right? with rates and availability, right? With check-in experience, what's the time to check in? Um, how, how does that relate to the booking engine and how does that data come back into the system, right? If you have multiple properties, right? How do you optimize all of your, your whole portfolio of properties, right? And I think um, we're seeing, you know, the, the, the new age PMSs or whatever w without using that acronym, right? But uh, th these PMSs are evolving into something that, that is, I think, synonymous with business intelligence. Uh, whether it's another platform out there that you can connect to, whether mm -hmm. you can bring that data back into the P into the PMS, I think it's about decision making. Right? Totally. So. And to expand on what you said, traditionally you have different roles inside a hotel, or inside a resort, or in a B and B, that were confined to their data source. They weren't. Conf they weren't. Sort of indoctrinated across all data that mm. could be meaningful yeah. Yeah. in helping their decision make. They might just see revenue management related data, but they're not seeing it as the big picture of, you know, yeah, I know my guests, you know, my guest history of, of what comes in and goes. I know what rates are happening in the market, but I might not necessarily see how our front desk staff is allocating those rooms on certain days. For, for gap reasons and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, and so if we can decompartmentalize de data and create those same roles, meaning the different functions within a hotel inside the product, but then make everything available. One of the reasons Pi is so good is we flush to the surface all the things that you would need in three little boxes to make a decision around rate on a specific day. And that's unique to us right now. All these other wonderful teams bring all that information. But because the PMS is part of the core data set, mm. and it's right there and it's seamless to all the other aspects of the application, it becomes really, really powerful and it makes decision making faster. Mm. But I think what we are trying to challenge our teams is we want to go further into workflow. We want to say, hey, every property does it different. Start automating your workflow, not our workflow, your workflow. In, in putting those workflows in a way that the system just starts doing things for them mm. in making some of those menial decisions mm -hmm. so that they can, again, go back to the guest, which I think yeah. is the most important part of it. I, I do. I think that that next step is workflow in terms of like kind of like what Slack has done for our company or what Slack is doing for companies out there. Like how do you how do your teams communicate? Right. How does what the front desk staff, staff is doing relate to housekeeping, relate to somebody, uh, customer experience or guest experience or e-commerce, right? These, all these teams have to talk together and they're kind of related mm -hmm. and they're all working on one mission, right? To create the best guest experience, right? To, to attract more guests and ultimately, you know, like more reservations, right? So I think it's, it's uh, I think that's the next step. And, and I think a PMS, I, I think 10 years from now, hopefully, we're not even talking about a PMS yeah. anymore. Right. Mm. We're not talking about an IBE. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to be talking. It's not. That's not what it is. Well, I think I think the term operating system, hotel operating system, or management system is is really the direction that we'll probably go in. And as you said before, it's PMS is such a his, historical term, and everyone's so entrenched in that those three letters. And if we could um, change that uh, perspective a little bit, it'll help. Yeah. So, so it's funny, SkyTouch actually owns the trademark to hotel operating system. All right. So it'll be interesting to see if they defend it. But, um, you know, Click at the Click conference, Booking.com's annual conference, yeah. one in 10 properties are using a modern cloud-based PMS yeah, today. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it's like, what, what on yeah. earth in yeah. all these different geographies are they using? I yeah. mean, there's such a wide variety of, mm. of that term. Yeah. And, and I think that creates incredible opportunities for operating system, HMS, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's funny because you, you mentioned you mentioned that SkyTouch. Yeah. I think six and a half years ago, 
when we had the booking engine and we, we started creating this dashboard, we were looking around for what was out there and we saw hotel operating, we saw operating system used by SkyTouch, right? And we were like, this is it, right? This is like, we're not a channel manager. We're not an HR, HR you know, HMS, right? We're, we're not a CRS. We're, 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 we're something more. We're like an operating system, right? So mm -hmm. I think, I think it's, um, uh, I think that it makes sense, but it, it still feels too techy. Right? Yeah. There's got to be something more. There's yeah. something something else that we have to come up with, yeah. kind of as a as an industry. Yeah. But so when a new hotel comes to you and says, "I need," I won't use the term PMS. I'll use another. <laughs> they <one>. say it. <laughs> I need a system to run my hotel. What's the What's the typical? Do you have like a, a, a scenario that you'd walk them through to say, "Well, tell me about your operation so that we can try to fit the right solution for you." Historically, it's kind of like, oh, great, yeah, let's just show you this, whether you really need all these features or whether they're relevant to you or not. So talk us through that process, because I think from a hotel's perspective, one of the biggest challenges is, is finding the right technology that fits their business sure. and their operations. Right. So we, we used to just say, look, here are the packages that you ultimately could buy. And we've now reshaped that to say, what are you trying to solve for? What are the solutions that you use today? And how are they being used when it comes to these types of systems? Mm. Oh, they're not connected? Great. Well, these can be connected in this way. Mm. We do still maintain sort of the essentials of what we know most of our users need, all the way to sort of enterprise, you know, solution grade and everything in between. That's from years of interacting with different property types, knowing that certain things need to be there and certain things need to be turned off. But the reality is we have absolute flexibility to turn on and turn off anything. Yeah, it goes, so, so I think the sales process is, is definitely not like, hey, this is what you need. You know, you're gonna use 20% of the features, you're gonna pay for 100% of the price, and we don't really care, right? That's, it's the, the selling process or the sales process is almost a, it's like a filtering or screening process to make sure, first of all, that, that we are a good fit for the property mm -hmm. and what does that what does the property need like to be what what does the property need to use right and that's passed um, during the selling process onto our implementation team and uh, you know our implementation team spends time actually further tailoring or getting real granular on what like what taxes and fees need to be turned on and off like what uh, what modules does the property need right so you you're actually getting I think a system that that you're using 80% of the functionality of, right, or 90%. Um, and, and it's, it also grows with your property, right? As you mm -hmm. evolve and you mm -hmm. want to do, right, you, you, you want something like Pi, you can, you can add that. Uh, if you want to turn something off, you can turn it off, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, um, it's really allowing the property to, to have control or, or of, of the experience, right? Yeah, yeah. So. What's your strategy towards the European market? Because that's certainly a lot more fragmented compared to the US, right? So. Um, are you ready for the individual markets like Portugal, Spain, Germany? Yeah. 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 So, so I mean, we, we, we've been there for since uh, we acquired My Allocator. So when we acquired My Allocator, it instantly gave us customers in, in Europe that we had mm. to accommodate. And when CloudBits and My Allocator fused together seamlessly, it began a sort of acceleration. Mm -hmm. And over time, we've done all the fiscal requirements the invoicing requirements, the police reports and, and whatnot to accommodate. Mm. And we do that globally. We're in 145 countries with hotels mm. and we're adding hundreds of properties a week now. And so that acceleration has forced our strategy to be very global minded. And Europe, Portugal, Spain are top five, you know, top 10, you know, markets mm -hmm. for us globally. Um, we have you know, massive teams invested in Europe. Uh, I think half of our staff is in Europe already. So it's it's in a really important and, market. Yeah, it's it's we look at it too. It's like a spectrum, right? Of every month, every year, we broaden the spectrum of what we can cover and what we can do, right? So yeah. we don't cover 100% of all property types in Thailand. We cover a lot of property types. We want to cover 100% of property mm -hmm. types in Thailand, 100% in Spain, 100% in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so every year we kind of gradually pull it back like more and open the pie. And we're, we're really careful doing this because we don't want to alienate property types that we've had before or properties using the system. So it has to all be scalable, modular, um, 
you know, all these things have to be turned on and off, yeah. right? So. Yeah. Last year, we spoke a lot about the new things coming up in our industry. So there was the topics were AI, blockchain, and all these things, uh, the open APIs. What's for you, like 2019, 2020, what's the next big thing on the roadmap? In the, for the industry in general, not for you only. Oh, so from a tech tech yeah. perspective, yeah. I think we'll see more AI, heavy, heavy yeah. AI. Yeah. Um, I think it's less about machine learning or AI specifically. I think it's the aspect of tying multiple systems together to then produce some kind of result faster mm -hmm. for the guest. Um, Glenn Fogel talked about, I don't understand when I get off a plane that's late, why Uber doesn't already know that I'm late and has like scheduled my ride to show up mm -hmm. within the 10 minutes of when I have landed, right? Why do I have to pull up my phone, request an Uber? It should be automated. That magic is missing in our industry. I, mm. I really, and I, I think kind of related to that, it's the human interface component to AI, right? So, I mean, we've had AI and, and there's machine learning that can can optimize my rate strategy, right? But what's the what's the human interface component, right? What's the, uh, how do I interact with AI? How do I make decisions? And, and is that a smooth, easy experience? Is it something that, uh, that, that causes me to have a bad experience and it's not, it's not effective, right? And I think we've seen a lot of AI, we've seen a lot of uh, IoT, but I think there's, there's a human interface layer component that has yet to evolve and I think that's sort of the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For those who are not aware of IoT, that's Internet of Things, yeah. just, just to be clear. If you, you have five minutes with a room of hoteliers, what would be the most important points that you would want to get across in that five minutes for them to understand? Not, not necessarily selling your product, but more about how they should be looking at approaching the whole prospect, prospect of, of procuring technology for their hotel. I'd say number one for me would be where do you want the emphasis of your team spending their time? So is it inside the system, collecting lots of information, mm -hmm. being better organized, or is it freeing them up to change the sort of stigma of a front desk and becoming more interactive like brands like Citizen M, which is just kiosk driven. So mm. do you want to be old school mentality or do you want to be new school mentality? And just starting there will immediately separate you into different types of, of service providers. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you should be focused on guest experience, right? In whatever form that takes, whether it's Citizen M, if that's what you want to be. Uh, you want to be a capsule hotel fund, right? Um, you want to be a, a B and B in Napa, right? And, and you want to have a very custom, like tailored, personal experience. That's great too. So I think you have to think about like who you want to be um, from a guest experience standpoint, and and then I think you need to figure out the system that gets you to that, gets you to who you want to be, right? And what's the what's the system that best helps you get there? Mm. And and I think there's there's many options out there, mm. um, and so. It's really important to understand who you want to be. If you don't know that, mm -hmm. you're just buying a PMS, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. not what what property should be doing. These I really liked Rich's point. It is about the guests, and mm -hmm. as soon as you figure out who you your persona is mm -hmm. as a property, mm -hmm. you begin to turn on and turn off functionality requirements. Mm -hmm. But you know, our big selling point, not to to give a pitch, is we just try to remove a lot, and and it kind of does things for you. Keep and so simple. keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but there's a ton of power behind that yeah. simple, yeah. and I think that's yeah. the nice nice part of a, a consolidated solution is you don't have to worry about all these other systems that may or may not lose connectivity mm. or mm. need a, an extra license here or there it's just it's it's in one place mm. we've we internally as our business have tried to consolidate the tools that we use so that we're not managing 50 different applications 50 different department needs it, it just it makes it complicated yeah yeah just one other thing finally that reminded me when you mentioned uh, about the front desk. Do you, do you think the front desk uh, has an expiry date in our industry? Do you think hotels will keep it, some will change, especially newer hotels being built? Yeah. What's your opinion on that one I, before we close out? I think, well, it's definitely evolving and it's going to evolve. Will it disappear? I absolutely think it will not. I hope so. I, mm -hmm. I mean, so Adam, Adam <laughs> See, that, loves... That's already an well, interesting it's, it's interesting, right? Adam, Adam 
uh, loves the Citizen M model, and I love it too, right? Mm. There's certain times in my life, like in the year when I'm traveling, where I just, I just want that experience, right? I just want to go to my room. I don't want to talk to anybody, right? And I just want to, you know, yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. Um, there That's are other times. <laughs> no, there are other times, though, you know, like in in certain hostile experiences, or you know, where I want a community, I want a group of people around me, right? Um, that I think. The front, like in Napa Valley, my example with a little B&B, well, it might be nice to have a really friendly uh, owner, right, or operator there with a story mm. like, of how he or she started, you know, the place and what's the background. And I want to talk to somebody. I want a relationship, right? And so I think but technology... I don't think you, I don't think you lose that. I, but I, well, I don't think no, so. I think the front like desk a host. No, I, I, actually I, hinders that, that. That's that, my point. That, I, think, yeah. I think the front desk evolves and we lose the name front desk like we're losing yeah. the acronym mm, PMS, yeah, right? Yeah. I think all of these traditional like big box hotel acronyms, yeah. they need to disappear. Yeah. And that's what's happening. Like you see this this diverse, unique inventory being created out there or experiences for, for guests to, to book that didn't exist before because of systems like CloudBeds making that easier. We're not mm. the only ones, right? But that but that's, mm. uh, I think we're enabling them, we're giving them the power to, to change the guest experience, and so I think that's the evolution of the front desk, right? It's it's going to go away as a as a name. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Cool. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's Absolutely. been great having you on the show. Really appreciate you being here, Richard. Yeah, thank you, to Adam. See you again. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, thanks. And again, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for your notifications. And until next time, it's bye for now from San Diego. Bye bye.